my name is Paul Malone and today I'm going to be giving you a short presentation on the home version of MathWiz brought to you by Wiz Education. This digital learning service is designed to deliver on three core benefits. The first is to provide each child that comes onto MathWiz with a tutoring journey which is unique as they are, which meets their individual ability level and unique learning profile. The second is to provide parents with an easy, education powerful and cost effective way to help tutor their children at home. And the third benefit is to provide a conduit between the home and school to create that powerful link of both parents, teachers and students working together towards a common goal to fulfill each child's potential. In order to do this, we're going to be looking at the account of Duncan and his nine-year-old daughter, Emma. Duncan's kindly giving us permission to show you these counts today and you'll find the login details within the award application. So let's start with looking at Emma's account or what Emma would see when she logs onto MathWiz. Put a username and password there and as long as Emma has an internet connection she can access MathWiz through tablets or computers or PCs. As you can see, there are two separate areas of the learning environment, the console and the study. Let's log on to the study. So here we can see Emma's study, which has been individualized by Emma to suit her individual tastes. It's designed to be a fun, engaging and safe environment for Emma to study her maths. There are three core components to this learning environment. So let's look at those now. We have the tutor, which is where Emma receives her individualized learning journey. We have topic bank, which is a series of lessons broken down by topic, differentiated to Emma's unique ability. And replay, which is a library of all the exercises and tests that Emma's undertaken on MathWiz that she can go on to again to build fluency and build mastery in those individual areas. Now when Emma first came on to MathWiz, the first thing she would have been doing is directed to go on to Start Tutor and she would have received an initial diagnostic assessment. That's a pure test without any of the animations which enables us to go topic by topic through each individual area to find out Emma's strengths and weaknesses what she's good and what she's not so good at. Then through the tutoring journey, we apply um, specific lessons directed to Emma's unique ability. In order to have a look at one of those lessons, I'm gonna go onto the replay section now. So these are all the lessons that Emma's undertaken so far during her tutoring journey. Let's click one on place value. To divide a number by 10, we move its digits one place to the right. Each of the 1200 MathWiz lessons are designed to behave the same way a human tutor would behave. To divide a number by 100, we move its digits two places to the right. So the first thing that would happen before a human tutor approaches a learning objective is they would give an initial tutorial to the students. Exactly the same thing happens in MathWiz. So before each learning objective, there's an initial tutorial section which the children can move backwards and forwards at at their own pace. Answer this division question. Once the tutorial section is over, then we start a series of exercises. Now, hopefully the children have got to a stage where they understand the learning objective through the tutorial, but they still might be struggling. So for this example, let's actually get this question wrong. So as you can see, 
MathWiz tutor is behaving the same way a human tutor would behave. If the child gets the question wrong, there's always extra scaffolding or help built into the lessons to direct the child to the understanding of that individual learning objective. So in this situation, we've directed Emma once again, we divide by 10, we move the digits one place to the right. So let's have another go. At the end of this exercise, Emma would then be directed through to an online test to make sure that Emma understanding she's created through the exercise and apply it through to a test which she may receive at school. This is very important to make sure that she's able to master that individual topic before we move her on to the next section of the learning journey. So to sum up, the lessons are designed to behave and simulate the tutoring behavior of a human tutor. Let's come out now and look at a couple of other components of Emma's learning environment. We're going to go back to her study. So you've also got an online dictionary of mathematical terms, an interactive board, and you can see here that Emma's earned over 3,000 credits. So every exercise and test which Emma's undertaken, she's been awarded a credit, which is based on both achievement and on how hard she's worked. And with those credits, she can buy pets and toys and plants. So it's a reward system. We want to build confidence and we want to make math engaging for children. And with those credits, as you can see, she's populated her play area and Emma's bought one of these parrots. Very nice. So you can explore that at your own pace um, with the online logins which can be provided for you. But now let's have a look at the reporting at what Duncan sees as a parent. How does he know that Emma's progressing in her mathematical journey? Well, in order to do that, we're going to log out here. And we're going to go into Duncan's account. So here we see Duncan's parent dashboard. We can see Emma, whose learning journey we've just seen, and we can see that she's just under 10 years old. And here, Duncan can control all, all his subscriptions. He can have multiple children within there if he'd like. He's also got a series of tutorials, which he can go and have a look at, at his, in his own time, uh, which will help him incorporate this virtual tutoring experience into um, Emma's life. And here's a, before we leave this bit and have a look at the reports, I'm going to show you one final point, which is really crucial. It's school. So here, and we've removed the school for privacy situation, is that uh, Duncan's able to put the school that Emma's in and share the reports with the school and, the, and Emma's teacher. This is really crucial. It allows for the parent and the teacher to be working together to fulfill a child's potential and be able to have a look at the reports I've been doing. So often when tutoring happens outside of the school, the teacher has no visibility and the work isn't brought together as one. Here, the teacher is able to see the work which has been doing on the virtual tutor and hopefully be able to use that to progress Emma in the classroom. Okay, now let's have a look at the report. So Duncan's bought um, MathWiz for his daughter Emma. Now he really wants to know, is Emma using MathWiz? Is she receiving her tutoring journey? What's her achievement level or her ability in all the areas of maths? And can he see that progress has been made? So let's have a look. Well, the first thing you can see on the top right hand side is report period. So this allows um, Duncan to be able to uh, view Emma's achievement and progress over any period of time. As you can see, it's set to this week, so Duncan can instantly see that so far, Emma's completed 14 minutes in tutor mode and six minutes in replay mode. What we're really looking for is a sweet spot of between 45 to 60 minutes a week. At 60 minutes a week, on average, in the first year of use, children will progress 1.8 years in the space of one academic year. But Emma's doing pretty well. Her math age now is 9.86. 
Um, and let's have a look at full history to see where she was at the beginning. Here we go. So she first started or she was first assessed in March 2014. So it's been two and a half years and she's improved just over three years in the space of that period. So she was seeing accelerated growth on usage of about 35 minutes a week, which is exactly what we'd expect to have. We'd like Emma to be using it a little bit more, pushing towards that 60 minutes, but that's still not too bad. And she's doing well. Now for her, uh, her dad, Duncan, he's going to have a look at her progression chart. And in looking at this, we're really going to understand how the tutor is delivering Emma's learning journey. So I hope you can see those red lines. As you can see, this is when Emma was first came onto MathWiz where she was initially assessed or where she was placed within each of the individual topic areas. And we can see that she had a weakness within properties of numbers, had a strength in decimals and in pencil and paper multiplication and division. So in applying standard algorithms, she was pretty good, but she was weak in other areas. The blue bars here represent the progress that Emma has so far been making within the virtual tutor. As you can see, extra attention has been paid by the tutor to those areas of potential weakness, potential roadblocks to learning that Emma could have come up against. And we now, over a three year period, produced a really nice rounded learning profile. So when Emma's approaching topics at school, she doesn't have any learning blocks which could prevent her going forward, and she's engaged and finds maths fun. So this is a great report for Duncan to be able to share at Parents' Evening. And through that earlier section, he can share that directly through to the school. But here's another report, which can also help on the Parents' Teacher Conference as well, which is a text report. It shows you where Emma was first assessed, what her current math age is, and also what her strengths and weaknesses are within each individual topic areas of maths. This has been used time and time again within parent-teacher conferences uh, to be able to have a shared understanding of what we can do to help Emma progress in her learning journey. In your own time, there's also other areas that you can look at. So here, we've got the ability for the parent to print out a certificate. We can send a message through to Emma, through to her learning environment, uh, directly from the parent, say, well done for doing your math whiz this week, keep on going. And we've also got a final tab, which is history. So that's a granular look at each of the individual exercises and tests which Emma's undertaken during her learning journey. And within the history, if there's a particular issue, then we highlight that with this little red mark. So if Emma was really struggling on an individual learning objective and maybe we wanted the parent to go uh, help a little bit, then what we can do is click on here and have a look at that test or exercise that Emma was struggling with. Once again, this is really great to provide visibility for the school and for the parent in terms of what Emma's actually doing. So let's go back now and close that out. So in summary, is delivered on three core components. To be able to deliver a tutoring journey, which is matched specifically to Emma's unique learning profile, her sweet spot of learning, where we're able to give extra attention to those areas of weakness and then progress her in all the other areas to provide a really nice rounded learning profile. We want to make this learning service as easy to use as possible. So Duncan, as a parent, will know if Emma's been on MathWiz what her achievement level is, and is she progressing? Is she doing well? And he can have the confidence that it's all matched to the local curriculum, so Emma's receiving exactly what she needs to do to progress at school. And we've given through the reporting and the shared reporting a valuable tool for Duncan to work with the school to make sure that the lessons which Emma's be getting is matched to her ability and will progress her as a mathematician. So I hope this, uh, this video that I've given you, plus the online logins, will give you a good rounded understanding of how we deliver our learning journeys to the students on MathWiz. Thank you very much for your time, um, and I hope that they found that useful.